Hey, what's up, you guys? My name is Christian Travis. Welcome back to Pixels. And today I have a question for you. Cloud gaming was once a concept of the future with many people wondering if it was a possibility to even be able to stream games without it being a mediocre or subpar experience. That was until March of 2019 when Google announced its first low latency 4K game streaming service called Stadia. Now, less than two years later, Google announces the closure of its very first in-house development studio. And now that begs the question, is cloud gaming in trouble? Don't get me wrong. Stadia is not closing down yet. It will still be active for third-party developers to take advantage of. Whether or not they decide to take advantage of the service is another question. But again, we aren't saying sayonara to this Google side venture yet. Before we get to the question that is, is cloud gaming in trouble or even viable in 2021, I figured it's kind of important for us to know how cloud gaming operates. Anyway, if you know how cloud gaming operates, you could see how there could be some minor issues or concerns for certain consumers. So I'm going completely off script because I wrote a long structured situation over here, but I, I feel like it's a little too complicated. I, I want to break it down as simply as possible. So cloud gaming actually operates a lot like any other streaming service. So you pay your fee, whether it's per month or per game, and you have the access to stream that game to your mobile device or computer. And it's basically a place for you to play your games instead of spending between $400 to $500 in a system or upwards of $1,200 and more for a PC. Now that could be a great attraction, but that's just it. Right now, it's not there yet. So the hard part of this whole ordeal is when you're streaming a movie, you're not really doing anything other than projecting a preset bunch of scenes, pictures, and sound to your screen. When you are streaming a video game, you have to take into account the point of control. So when you click, actually, So when you click the button on your controller, there's a certain amount of latency or time that it takes between you clicking that button and the game actually doing that action that you click the button for. But with cloud gaming, it's a little bit different. When you click that very same button, that signal gets processed through either the phone you're using, the TV service you're using, and that button signal gets pushed through that service up into, let's say the cloud, and goes to the servers that are hosting this game. Then once that signal reaches the server, it then has to output the image or the action of the game all the way back to your TV. So there's a little bit more of a middleman than there would be if you were playing with a console where it's right here in your home. So cloud streaming services like Google Stadia, Amazon Luda, and Xbox Game Pass, they actually do a pretty good job of reducing this latency. Now, not entirely eliminating it, but it's quite comparable to what you would get with a game console. The only thing I would say to stay away from is probably competitive games like PUBG, Apex, um, basically all those battle royale games you kind of want to avoid because even though it's not that much latency and most people wouldn't notice it, it could affect your gameplay. Okay, so you're probably saying this dude just told me that the, it's very comparable in latency to a console, so why wouldn't cloud gaming be viable in 2021? That is where we can get into cloud gaming's biggest hurdle, and that is Wi-Fi. I'm sure this isn't news to everyone, but not all Wi-Fi services are the same. Here in the US, we don't have Wi-Fi speeds that are that great unless you pay a big chunk of money and even so you're still not getting the full potential of what Wi-Fi could be. In places like Hong Kong, South Korea, and Japan, they actually have super fast speeds unmatched by anything we have, at least here in the US. If you live anywhere else, your speeds could vary, but I'm talking about here in the US. And it's not going to be a great experience on all fronts if people have different types or different speeds of Wi-Fi. Sure, cloud gaming is a very possible and a very good experience for people with strong Wi-Fi signals, but you're probably wondering, what if I don't have that package that provides me with the fastest speeds? Well, in theory, 
low Wi-Fi speeds should be acceptable for these experiences as well. Now, bear with me on this. According to Amazon, Google, and Microsoft, they have both given stats saying that Wi-Fi speeds as low as 10 megabits per second can get you that experience that you would like to play your game. Now I feel like we're just getting to a whole bunch of follow-up questions, but now you're saying, okay, Wi-Fi speeds 10 megabits per second, that's actually pretty low. It's very plausible to get this experience from cloud gaming. So why are people turned off on the concept and why isn't it as popular as console gaming yet. It's been two years. I don't personally know anybody who streams cloud gaming exclusively as opposed to a console, and not many people are talking about these services. If the bar is so low and 10 megabits is very plausible for you to get a cloud gaming experience, why are consumers not as into the experience and dedicating their full time to a cloud gaming service. Well, I actually have two creators that I enjoy very much that were gracious enough to give me their time and answer some questions to help me get to the bottom of this. So joining me today to help answer these questions are Trevor from The Gaming Goomba over on YouTube. I'll be sure to leave that link down below. And then I also have Mario Rivera, who has some experience in um, journalism, content creation, and a whole bunch of other stuff over at Dual Shockers. He is currently moving on from that point, creating his own content. He started his own podcast, which I will also link down below. Both of these creators are passionate about gaming and both have two very different outlooks on gaming services in general. So in order to get their thoughts on the general concept, I asked both Trevor and Mario, what's the first thing that comes to mind when it comes to cloud gaming? And at first, they actually seem to be both on two opposite ends of the spectrum. I say game gaming accessibility. The fact that you can game on the go, depending on where you are, um, as long as you have either solid connection, of course. But as the future goes along, especially with 5G technology being implemented in cell phones, uh, and I have personally have tested this, uh, it's definitely a very possible future that, yeah, you're gonna be able to play full console games on the go wherever you are with the best, you know, amount of style in terms of gameplay and stuff like that, so yeah. Um, I mean, I, th I see it as kind of an inevitability at this point. Mm. I'm not a fan of it just because I'm a traditionalist and I like to have my shelf full of video games and um, I like to collect things and, you know, I like the idea of, of owning something. I mean, I know it's probably not going to happen, but there's always that thought in the back of my head of, you know, I own it, but do I really own it? Uh, you know, it's on a, it's on an account or it's on a, it's on a file somewhere. Um, but I mean, it's, it's inevitable that everything goes digital or whether it be digital or streaming. Um, I'm, you know, I'm accepting of it just, you know, as long as I can still play games, but um, I'm not going to go down without a fight in terms of buying my games uh, physically. As you see, Mario actually immediately sounds excited in the concept and the idea of possibly playing video games wherever you are, whether that's from your phone, your TV, or your tablet device. Trevor actually seems defeated when I ask him this question and says it's inevitable, but he actually prefers to own his physical games or download them directly to his console. He likes the fact that you have immediate access to the game whenever you'd like. And this is a common issue that most people take with cloud gaming. People are afraid if this service goes out of business or for some reason removes a game that they purchased, that they'll never be have access to those saves or those files again. Not to mention this is a huge deal for video game preservationists. Preservationists? Preservers? Per you know what I mean. The idea and the possibility of a game disappearing forever with no access to a physical version of it is concerning for some people, which is rightfully so. Now, when it comes to this thought, you have to weigh the benefits for the cost. As Mario actually goes into detail, he could totally see the use of these services in the future, especially when they introduce ideas like 5G into the mix. He talks about his experience with cloud gaming on 5G, and he goes much more into detail about the convenience of gaming on the go. And if you aren't familiar with 5G, 5G is essentially a boosted cell signal that providers like Verizon, T-Mobile, and Sprint are implementing around the United States currently. It basically offers unheard of speeds off of a cellular network. The one thing to keep in mind though is that these areas that are accessible 
are very limited and very far and few in between. So again, we have another issue there where things aren't accessible or reliable. Anyway, 5G is a whole other conversation for a whole nother day. I can maybe even make another video about it, but that's like the bare minimum idea of what 5G is. Like I said, right now, it's perfectly doable to play a game on Wi-Fi locally, especially at the bare minimum, but you're not going to be experiencing those buttery smooth frames or that very crisp resolution anytime soon through a cell service or our current system of Wi-Fi. Moving on to features. I asked these gentlemen if there's anything that these services could do to draw them in and possibly make them take the plunge into cloud gaming, and they both actually had similar thoughts. I would say there definitely has to be a combination of a existing library as well mm -hmm. as upcoming library. So exclusives, I think, are big. So I think xCloud or you know Game Pass as a whole has the lock on that because every game that will come out for that platform will be also available on xCloud. So that's pretty big. Uh, they have that that exclusivity there. When it comes to like upcoming titles for like Stadia, which you know we've heard some news, obviously some studios are closing, it doesn't look to see it be a future when it comes to very much exclusive stuff, the only place where you can play these things. The, mm. the game that comes to mind, um, Guilt, which was a game that was from, I think, Tango Works um, for Stadia. It's a, exclusively still only on Stadia, but I don't think it's enough. As much as I actually kind of enjoy that game, I just don't think it's enough. Um, but yeah, exclusivity, I think that's the main key. Um, yeah, I would probably say a, a flat rate, maybe uh, kind of like a like a Netflix kind of thing that there might already be being done for all I know. Like I, I haven't looked a ton into it. Yeah. Uh, but I mean, like I don't have a uh, I don't have a PS5 or an Xbox Series X right now. And there's there's some games out there that I would like to play that obviously the Nintendo Switch can't handle. Stuff like uh, Spider Man Miles Morales and uh, the new God of War, whenever that comes out. And well, I, I guess those are all PlayStation exclusives, anyways. But uh, yeah. But the kind of stuff that I obviously won't come out on the switch that i would like to play um and i i don't want to invest into a, a 500 hundred dollar playstation 5 um yeah. but yeah if there was like a, if i paid 50 dollars a month and i kind of just had like an access to like an unlimited library and i could just kind of pick and choose games that i wanted to play whenever um through streaming i'd probably be down for that but paying a full uh 60 dollars to not even have a physical copy of a game or even like a file whenever you're just streaming it like through Stadia. That's that's not that attractive to me right now, but there are definitely, there are some things that uh, these companies could do that could start to lure me in, at least for these bigger AAA games that I can't get out of my Nintendo Switch right now. Now, the interesting thing here is that both Mario and Trevor both had some very similar ideas, and that was on the topic of exclusives. So they both said that if one of these services could provide a great exclusive or title that isn't offered on any of the other counterparts on console, it could be something that could pull them in and possibly have them join a cloud streaming service. That being said, it has to be a good game. Mario does mention how Xbox is currently the only people who do this, and I'm saying do this very loosely because they don't really have that many exclusives, but they do promise that you'll be able to play your xCloud games or Game Pass games or whatever third thing this is going to be on the service as well as on console. So whatever you can access on your Xbox, you can access on the go on your mobile device. And Trevor actually adds the idea of paying a single price per month, which can add to the bang for the buck as opposed to paying for things separately on Stadia per game. These pricing strategies are actually both being implemented on Game Pass and in the beta of Project Luna or Luna for Amazon. Xbox starting at $9.99 for Game Pass on PC, Game Pass on console, or $15.99 for both services in Game Pass Ultimate, whereas the current beta for Luna is currently only at $5.99, but that price is subjected to change once it is accessible to the public. So if you're looking for an alternative to Google Stadia and that initial price concept kind of turned you off, you do have a choice here for another service or wait out for Luna. Now, there also could be one more thing that could keep people away from cloud gaming services, and that could be the versatility or ease of use of it. Some services offer features that aren't accessible on other services. Some services offer certain deals with developers that aren't accessible on other services, and there's no 
particular service that offers the full package. When asking Mario and Trevor about their thoughts on this, this is what they have to say. I feel like there's still so much places that they could grow um, when it comes to expanding the actual services themselves. Um, for instance, I think Stadia had a good idea to start with, but limiting it only to the Chromecast was probably a big detriment. Having it be sort of an app that could have been available at other places, I think it's just such a more uh, rich idea <laughs> as opposed to just promoting your own products. Even though yeah. I, I do love my Chromecast, I actually got, once I got my Stadia controller, it came with a Chromecast and I love it very much so. But at the same time, also uh, for Xbox, right? It's only available currently on Android phones. Yeah. I, we need it on iOS. We need it on iPads. We need it on a television, I think, without a box in the house for people to maybe try to accept it. Again, it's a, uh, these are things that could be put on so many different places um, if they're just service apps. So definitely room to grow there in terms of like the actual services and by the way one of the services that people don't really talk about a lot is actually geoforce now which is also really solid yes that, that is a service if you have steam and and ubisoft connect uh mm -hmm. you can you know play your games on the go all the time that's how i first started playing hitman yeah i could, I could see that being a turn off because you know everybody has their their ways that they like uh playing uh, like playing video games you know like a, a lot of like the traditional way is still in my opinion playing on a couch sitting in front of the tv um so i mean a lot of people were probably getting these streaming services but people who are, are getting these streaming services and uh it, like i think you said only one service uh, allows you to play on the TV right now. Yep. So that would that would mean I'm a, you're assuming that all these people are uh, mostly playing on their computer, but if you already have a, a powerful uh, PC, why don't you just download the games digitally? Whereas, um, you know, with these streaming, uh, download the games digitally um, so that you can play the games to these full capacity and not have to worry about having a strong internet connection. Um, but, you know, at least if you have the option to go from your TV to your phone to your computer to all, you know, to all these different places, uh, that's a little more incentive there to to pay for the service. Whereas, hey, I can play my game on a computer here and then I can pick it up and, and just log in on the TV. Um, but I mean, it's it's still in its infancy. So maybe that's something they can get to eventually. I, like, I guess you said one of these uh, services has gotten to the point where they allow you to play on the TV, but um, I think flexibility would definitely be their uh, strong suit because if you can only play on a computer, why not just download the game and, and have it at its full capacity? So once again, we still have an agreement here. I personally think it's fair to assume the average consumer might get confused as to what service can do what. And overall, I think when looking at all on a piece of paper, it could be a little overwhelming. In a simplified explanation of this, I'm literally going to read off my notes over here because it's a lot. Currently, Stadia is the only service that offers an option to play on TV. Xbox Game Pass or xCloud is only available on Android and not iOS. And though Luna does give you the option to play on iOS or Android, they don't offer you one of the most important features, which is television play. So again, looking at all this at once is a lot. But that does leave the question, is cloud gaming our future? Now, the one thing I do have to point out is that Trevor is very into physical media. He prefers to have his games in his hand, on disc, on cartridge, any way he could get them. And you could hear more about that in the full interviews that I had for with both Mario and Trevor. They were actually really great and they gave me about 20 minutes each. So I'll put that in one video and link it up here or here i don't i don't link things often so i'm not sure where it's gonna be but there is something interesting to take note even though trevor enjoys his physical media he did also agree with mario that cloud gaming could be part of our futures whether it be in tandem with downloading games or us fully getting on board with cloud gaming in the future and using it exclusively. 100% I do think that cloud gaming is a future. I don't think it might be the future. I think digital downloads mm -hmm. still have a place. I think the internet infrastructure still has to improve because I'm testing out on 5G only because I'm lucky to be in one of the 5G cities. There are so mm -hmm. many places out there in rural areas and other places that play games that are not gonna have the same access. And once that becomes a priority, obviously there's a lot of other things that be priority, you know, world hunger and uh, global warming and all that. But internet yeah. for all, I think is something that would be beneficial. And personally, I at this point it's a utility, it should be free, um, including high speed. And this requires high speed. So we need to develop towards that. There are companies right now that are developing higher speeds like the 5G network with uh, Verizon and you had Google Fiber a couple of years ago, which I think is still kind of around, but not 
quite positive. But yeah, the internet infrastructure still has to improve in order for these things to exist. Um, in the meantime, da digital downloads are still a thing. Physical copies are still a thing. We still have consoles that have physical you know, drives. PC's not so much, right? PC kind of is killing the physical disc market if you've bought a or made a PC recently. So it, it I think digital downloads is probably gonna be the main thing, but having the ability to just turn a game on, not having to worry about loading it up or downloading it, and not having to worry about updating it. These are wonderful things that I think that really could be beneficial in the future, especially when it comes to like demos. The fact that maybe I can just load up a 10 minute, 20 minute demo and it just starts playing. Um, I think in the future that streaming is going to be the predominant way that people play mm -hmm. video games. Uh, you're still going to have your hardcore gamers that, you know, want to play the game because it's going to be a long time before you can play a game at its full potential on streaming. So I still think you're going to have uh, those hardcore gamers that know that they want the 60 frames per second and the, you know, the, the best possible quality they can get with the game and, and no input lag. They're going to want to download the games and, and have the file completely downloaded and playing it like that. Mm -hmm. But as for the casual gamer, which makes up for more than 50 percent of the market in terms of video games they're not going to tell much of a difference between streaming and and uh, digital and it's going to be a lot more accessible for people to subscribe to a service and instantly have a library to a bunch of games rather than individually playing uh, paying for all of these individual games um that's just the future like like i said before the technology's not there right now but as soon as it is there and it's just more accessible to the casual gamer i think it's going to take over now again i'm saying that it could be a future and I could say I could probably say that they agree as well emphasis on the a now this could be in a few ways we can have cloud gaming as our main way to entertain ourselves with video games but like Mario says it's gonna take some advancements in technology to get there I could also see there being a different use of cloud gaming an example we talked about again in one of the interviews is I suggested the idea of downloading games and then possibly while your game is downloading you're able to stream it and then once that download is complete it switches like that right over to the downloaded version of the game and you get it at a higher fidelity whether it is frame rate or resolution i can go into detail about the different abilities and different uses for cloud gaming in the future but again let's bring it back to today now, 2021, is this a viable option for you to use exclusively? And I wouldn't think so yet. And that yet comes with a huge asterisk. If you're a gamer like me who owns one or even two of the current gen consoles and or a PC, this could be a fun service to dabble in, but I do not see it the experience comparing to the physical consoles or computer that you have in your house. Like I said earlier, Stadia is the only platform that allows you to play in 4K on your TV, and even then it seems to be a bit off. Resolution drops, if the signal drops slightly, your frames will drop. Things won't look right at certain points, I know because I've had this experience myself, but if you are a casual gamer who has maybe not played for a long time or maybe just in general wants to give a video game a try without having to invest five six hundred dollars in a console this is where it could be reliable you pay your 10 5 16 depending on the service um, membership and then you just play your games unless you're Google Stadia and then you pay an extra amount of money so you could play a specific game but maybe this is the option for you if you want to give that Watch Dogs or Assassin's Creed game that you've been seeing everyone play on their consoles a try maybe if you want to dabble into some Sonic Mania which I have to say is a great game and it performs fantastically on my home Wi-Fi currently. I think as long as you aren't trying to reach those crisp 4K graphics, 60 frames a second, and in some cases even more, I think this could be a great option for you. Cloud gaming is a part of our future and only time will tell 
on how it will be implemented. I just wanted to say thank you again to both Trevor and Mario. You are both some great creators and I am so grateful that you took the time to help me out with this video. I'll be sure again to link their stuff in the description, so click there. Um, they'll also be their social medias, our Twitters, everything in that section. And also if you want to check out that 20 minute interview, I'll also have it linked in the description as well. What are your thoughts on cloud gaming? Are you going to give this one of these services a try? Do you think it's too soon? Do you think that it's a good option for you? Be sure to let me know in the comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe. It lets me know that you're enjoying the content that I'm putting out and uh, it gives me that little boost to keep creating. Anyway, stay safe, guys. Always be kind to one another, and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.